not only did we get the phase four announcement for all the movies marvel is coming out with but on the same day they decide to do it avengers endgame finally passes avatar for being the highest grossing movie of all time you better smash that like button tony stark did not die to be number two hey guys my name is chris and that's right phase four was fully announced at san diego comic-con during the hall h panel kevin feige went ahead and announced the 10 projects that'll be coming out for this phase four some of them even included Include TV shows that you're gonna have to watch on Disney Plus. He's I scared they got my money. So what I'm just gonna quickly do is run down everything with Phase Four, give you my reaction, just small tidbits. But be sure you're letting me know down below which of these projects you're most excited for, even your theories of how this is all gonna go down, because you know they're leading up to something else pretty big here if they just ended the Infinity Saga. Who knows what this saga is named? So starting off with the first film in their slate, November 6, 2020, they did announce The Eternals. Now, I know you're already thinking, even you diehard comic book fans, The Eternals? Who is that? Well, this could be their next Guardians of the Galaxy. The Eternals is based off pre-existing mythological stories, almost in the way that Thor is based off Greek mythology, bringing it all the way back to when our planet was created, thanks to a couple of beings known as the Celestials. We're gonna have actors and characters, Angelina Jolie playing Thena, Salma Hayek playing Ajax, Don Lee playing Gilgamesh, and I want to pronounce this as Sprite, but it's probably Sprit as Liam McHugh, Kumani Nanjiel as Kingo, oh my god, so happy he's there, Brian Tariq Henry as Fastos, Lauren Roldoff as McCurry, and Richard Madden as Icarus. Now some of those names might be familiar to you, because just like I said, it's based off pre-existing lore in our mythology. This will deal with a ragtag group of people who were the first ones to be on Earth, and the story is just gonna be mind-blowing. These are immortal characters, so technically they're still somewhere out there in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so where were these guys during Avengers Endgame? Logo's pretty simple and cool. November 2020, yeah, why not? I'll be honest, probably the least thing I'm excited for, but the cast, man, you cannot deny the star power they have here. Kumani Nanjiel, man, he got absolutely ripped, and I can't wait to see what he'll do with this. From there, we were treated to the announcement of a Disney Plus show, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now, this will be premiering in fall of 2020, and again, it'll follow the events after Endgame with Falcon playing by Anthony Mack and Sebastian Stan as the Winter Soldier. Going on a mission, some of the big news that came out, Baron Zemo will be involved. It'll be the same actor from Civil War. Only big thing is he will actually be wearing his purple hoodie and that thing looks bomb in the comics and I cannot wait for what it'll look like in the actual show. They had some concept art of what they were trying to make it look like in Civil War, but for some reason they didn't decide to use it. This time they finally will and I am so excited, not only just to see this thing, but how Anthony Mackie as Captain America now will hold the shield and fight against because the man is still human so i wonder how he's gonna take care of these foos and the logo's not so bad either i think it's interesting that they still call him the falcon maybe captain falcon would have been nice moving on from there definitely one of the top three things i'm most excited about after everything they've announced is shang chi and the legend of the ten rings the ten rings are coming back guys for everyone that was upset in iron man 3 where they just completely blew off the character of the mandarin he's coming back y'all this will be coming out february 12 2021 one we have tawny loon playing the mandarin the real mandarin and i kind of hope they bring back ben kingsley and the movie just starts off with him taking him out like you do not use my name in vain i am the mandarin we also have aquafina joining the cast you can probably bet she'll be the love interest and chang he himself will be played by simu louis sorry if i mispronounced that but this man is about to be an absolute legend the reason i'm most excited for shang chi is because they're gonna make a kung fu marvel movie and when i think of great kung fu movies i think of of something like the old Jackie Chan movies and if they can manage to do that well with some of the choreography that they've done with the Captain America movies this movie will blow our minds because I am a sucker for a great kung fu movie so if this will be anything like that this is going to be a movie I'm highly anticipating following the pattern of movie to tv show we have on Disney plus WandaVision some more information mind-blowing this will take place after Avenger Endgame a lot of us thought this series would take place in between Infinity War and Civil War and we would see the Vision and Scarlet Witch just falling in love, being romantic, maybe fighting a bad guy here and there. No. So that means the Vision is coming back somehow, some way. Sure, he must have saved his subconscious at the end of Infinity War and is somehow going to bring his body back to life. But not only that, we have some familiar characters joining in on this. Monica Rambeau, the little girl that you saw in Captain Marvel, we're going to see her full adult self show up in WandaVision. If you don't know, Monica Rambeau in the comics was introduced once as a Captain 
Captain Marvel, so who knows if she'll get some sort of superpower here or her involvement in this project. And it seems a little confusing, but you gotta remember, Captain Marvel took place in the 90s and Avengers Endgame took place a decade and a half later. So her being an adult definitely makes sense. Breaking the pattern though, we got another TV show announcement, this time the Loki television series, again premiering on Disney Plus Spring 2021. And yes, it was confirmed Tom Hiddleston will be following the 2012 version of when that mistake happens in Endgame of him disappearing with the Tesseract. We will follow that version of Loki. So this will not be the redeemed Loki that we got to see in Thor Ragnarok. The one where he's a little nicer to his brother. He's maybe a little more good. He's learned his lesson. No, this is straight up evil Loki, the man who was taking out people's eyeballs. That's the version of Loki we're about to see. Some of the behind the scenes photos though have hinted that this could be a period piece because there are billboards of Jaws in the background. So maybe there'll be some time travel involved with that Tesseract. Still super excited and Tom Hiddleston of course is coming back. That'll be a fun show to catch up on. Bringing us back though to movies, we have the announcement for the second Doctor Strange film entitled Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. And that title, if it does not get you going, I don't know what will. The Multiverse of Madness. We know Doctor Strange is no fool to the multiverse. I mean, in Endgame, he talked about 14 million possibilities that he witnessed. Somebody's gonna correct me on the exact number. I'm sorry about that. But the fact that somehow in this film, he's gonna get trapped in the multiverse, but not only that, Scott Derrickson, the director who's known for horror movies, great horror films, he has confirmed that this will be the first scary movie of the Marvel Universe. This will actually be a horror film. That's gotta sound like magic to your ears because the Marvel Cinematic Universe is just changing things up. So many people say, oh, every movie is the same. Just input a hero there and there. No, they're changing things up and having a horror movie as a horror fan with Doctor Strange? Yeah, I gonna be there. But one of the big surprises is that Scarlet Witch is going to be showing up in this Doctor Strange movie directly after whatever happens in WandaVision. Announcing that WandaVision is directly tied in to Doctor Strange. So that's two things you have to connect. How crazy now that we're finally getting movies that connect to TV shows. That is just how everlasting this Marvel Cinematic Universe is getting, and it's got me excited. That'll be coming out May 7th, 2021. From there, summer 2021, we're going to be treated to a what-if show. Now, as much as I would have loved this to have been a live-action interpretation, this will be animated. Still, that cannot let you be disappointed because some of the voice members of the actual Marvel Cinematic Universe are going to lend their voices for this TV show. It was previously said that they would not be touching on Marvel Cinematic Universe stories that they would just pull from the comics, random stories of like, what if Peter Parker wasn't Spider-Man? What if Deadpool owned a karaoke bar? Stuff like that, just really wacky nonsense. But it looks like some of the episodes will actually touch upon the cinematic universe. And that just has my mind going of like, what if Ultron won? And then what would that world look like? What if Captain America didn't get frozen in ice? Even if this is animated, I think it's still something I definitely want to watch. So that's cool news. From there, another TV show, Hawkeye the Television Series. Now, if you have read the comic run of Hawkeye, My Life as a Weapon, this is basically it right here. This television series will see Hawkeye Jeremy Renner return as Ronan, so he's still in that dark mood. Who knows why, man? You got your family back. Well, I guess because you lost your best friend. Okay, you, you have a good point there. And it will be him training someone else to take over the Hawkeye mantle, Kate Bishop. You cannot tell me you're not excited for this. A Hawkeye television series of him training a younger person to take over the mantle. You know there's going to be some relationship mirroring of him looking at this little girl of, you remind me a lot of my best friend and I miss her. That's really cool. Maybe not the one I'm most excited for out of all the television series, but one I'm happy is definitely being made. From there, getting back to the movie universe, Thor 4, officially titled Thor Love and Thunder. What a perfect title. Taika Waititi, is returning to direct. It'll have Chris Hemsworth as Thor again, Tessa Thompson returning as Valkyrie. They even said Taika Waititi would bring Korg back. You gotta love that character, but the mind-blowing twist here, Natalie Portman is not only coming back, but she is going to take up the mantle as female Thor. Mm, Marvel, you are doing unbelievable things. One, I am so happy Natalie Portman is being brought back and she wasn't just tossed away and forgotten. And even more that you're bringing her back to do this storyline, it just has my mind racing of, did Thor lose his power? Did Natalie Portman take over the hammer? She is worthy now. Also, who will the villain be? Man, this just has my mind racing. Very happy for this one and you gotta love that logo. November 2021. All right, moving on to the next thing here. We have Black Widow movie, the one that was 
not even a secret. We all knew this was happening. Things in the background happening, but some official nice details about this. It will take place in between Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. So it's not just such a way back prequel like we thought. It'll be Natasha Romanoff going back to Budapest, a familiar place that we get hinted to endlessly. So you can pretty much bet that we're going to see some Black Widow flashbacks of her time in Budapest. Some of the footage that they showed at Comic-Con here was her riding on a bike, guns a-blazing, and one of the characters telling Black Widow, you just had to come back to Budapest. Also confirming that Taskmaster, yes, an amazing villain, is going to be front and center of this Black Widow movie. Now, if you're not familiar with Taskmaster, he has photo muscle memory. Basically, if he sees someone fight like Bruce Lee, his body just automatically memorizes it and can copy the moves instantly. A hand-to-hand -hand combat villain is exactly what Black Widow needs here. Very excited to see that movie. And of course, we thought it was over. We thought we were done. We were all happy and smiling. Look at us like Kevin Feige, you've done it again. Phase four, here we go. But the man has to surprise us with some mind-blowing stuff. Not only did he confirm that Black Panther 2 is being developed, Captain Marvel 2 is being developed, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is also happening. There's just, I guess, not farther along in the process to know exactly the titles and dates, but he let us know that Fantastic Four is definitely in the works and they are going to start this thing pretty soon. So just because you don't see the timeline filled out these dates, any minute now, next week, next month, we can get an announcement, Fantastic Four 2021. You know they got to fit in a Spider-Man 3 movie in here and they're not going to wait the seven years of this timeline. They're going to fit it in somewhere in there when they have the logistics down. So just because you see this timeline, it's not permanent. Not everything is even guaranteed. We saw what happened to Inhumans and that disappeared. So stuff can be added and stuff can be taken away. So we got to see what happens. But Fantastic Four, so happy that they finally talk about this happening. He even says no time for mutants. So you know X-Men is being talked about, but guess they just don't have a plan figured out yet. You know they're working on something though. But of course, the bombshell they decided to drop Blade is happening with an amazing casting choice of Marshall Lee, Oscar winning actor, The Boy is Blade. Sorry, Wesley Snipes, but this is way better casting. Not only are there vampires now in the cinematic universe, but we're gonna have someone hunting them down and fighting. <sighs> <laughs> this is all amazing announcements. I can't wait to see how that turns out. It might even be Marvel's first R project. You can go PG-13 with a Blade movie. I want to see all that vampire bleed blood everywhere. Very happy with all these announcements, guys, but you have to let me know down below. I am going to give me some sleep. Probably not even going to get sleep. I'm just going to be giddy and happy that this Phase 4 is happening. Any best guesses to where the world is headed? Your favorite announcement? Best thing that come out of this? You guys let me know. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3 cfilmreview as always, I'm Chris. Take care.